think we might get a nice day today which will be handy because I've got to play down here it seems we have a, a split drive shaft built which is one thing that um, it's failed the MOT on um, mechanically that was the only thing it failed the MOT on so we have to attack this uh, I'll have to undo the hub pull it forward, drop the drive shaft out of the, the wheel I'm hoping I don't have to undo the drive shaft I'm hoping if I just undo these two nuts here one somewhere down down here and put the caliper back out of the way I can pull the entire hub and swivel it on the um, track with end, tie with end give it a swivel and that I should be able to split the drive shaft out of the end of the cup and um, get it on that way because I don't want to disturb this um, I've got a big socket for it but they usually are pain in the ass um, the amount of torque pressure call it what you want that you've got to put on them to tighten them back up um, these nuts tend to be a bit used once only because they're, they're quite a thin nut not many threads and over years of them being on the threads of the nut kind of weld themselves into the threads of the drive shaft so I'm hoping I don't have to touch it and I can I can cheat I can pull the entire I'd sooner pull the entire hub off the end of the shaft and try to take the cup out the bearing it's um it's just one of them things I've done it that way once before and it seemed quicker and easier than fighting with this if you've not got huge hefty power tools um, the downside is is if I attempt to do it that way and I can't do it then I've got to put it all back together so I can put the wheel back on so that I can then attack this because if you've got this up in the air and you don't have air tools and a, a decent air powered ratchet gun you're not going to crack this nut off when it's up in air so I have to put the wheel back on put it back on the wheel and then have a go then um, I have had them um, so bad um, that even I standing on me on my bar that even I couldn't shift them and I've had to stick the bar on the nut and then the bar against the ground and drive forwards um, which is interesting but I'll, I can't, I'll crack on with this be back in a minute so I can't I should get a stand for the phone because I'm not going to stand it here and work but well, we'll do as we are for now so I'll have a go at getting these out and see if we can pull this off oh we're getting there we're just on the kind of the end of the as you can see they sound a bit on the dry side but um is the caliper bolt and the last one of it it's about to come out hold your breath this is the winner there we go I also took this out of there which secures the drum when the bolts aren't securing the drum um, disc not drum disc what a dickhead um, so now this should all um, nowhere to put the frigging phone as you can see now it all comes off in one piece um, pardon me while I just tie this up there well I didn't have to wire it up there and hang it so I've actually got enough flexios it can sit on the ground there's no tension on that at all and just a bit of wire just to make sure it don't fall over because uh, if it did it would put tension on that and I don't want that 
I'm going to change them flexi hoses. They're old. About time it got new ones. Probably been on there since Noah built an ark. But, um, they'll do for summer. But I might get them on before winter. But definitely before it's next year MOT. If we keep it that long. So, that's been stuck there out of the way. With a bit of that, this stuff's wonderful. Thousand and one uses, but I've a bit of snag here. Um, I've got a stiff nut, which you don't want at this time on the morning. It's only about half past seven out here, which is a bit early for a Saturday. But um, if you do get a, a stiff nut, don't keep trying to undo it. Kind of go up with it, undo it, and then when you come to take your span up, just back it off a tiny bit and start again. And as you do, give it a second or so's gap between each one. Um, so if you keep working at it, it'll get hot. Not hot, hot, but it gets hotter, it's warmer. And as it gets warmer, the bolt will expand, the nut will expand, and they'll grab each other more. So heat is your enemy. So don't get it warmed through, don't get it hot. Just up a bit, down a bit, and keep going. And it's like if you get some up between your hands and rub them together, crap will fall out at the edges. Whatever, if you've got sand between your hands and you rub your hands, it'll fall out at the edges. And it's the same with this, with the, the rusty material. As you go up and back it off, tiny amounts will kind of come out of the threads at each end, which helps. So up and down, a bit of a gap. Don't rush it you'll just make matters worse if you do uh, especially when they're in the danger of being rounded off right that one is because it's you know it's old just one of them things that that's what happens to them um, that's starting to have a small tiny crack in it there I guess I might need a new one of them before end of year I'll get a couple hoarded off eBay or somewhere wherever's cheapest and just keep them to one side until I do another job and then I'll do them at the same time can't see anything else under here that's a bit of an issue this water pipe um, that water pipe's just above there I might stick a bit of polystyrene or something in that gap um, you don't want that to rub through when you're hundreds of miles from home and then you've got no water and you end up on a tow truck if you can afford one so but yeah as you can see that's definitely that's had better days so hence it failed I'll stick my new one on as soon as I get this out I'm hoping I can just get this out and I said pull the hub forwards and when it tilts forwards I'm hoping there's enough tilt to knock the drive shaft out the back um, I might end up having to undo bottom knuckle as well which I saw done on someone else's channel he's got a a Fiat Scudo and a Fiat Scudo and a Peugeot 806 are a very similar chassis and if you've got a Peugeot 806 then it's also a Fiat Eurocease um, and something else the name escapes me um, no it's gone but they're all built on a very similar kind of chassis design um, so they all work the same way so as I said the guy's got a Scudo his YouTube channel is um, Scudo Camper um, it's worth checking out, he goes on quite a few walks out into the country which if kind of me uh, in the middle of suburbia you don't get that much country it's nice to see another side of the world so it's worth checking out his channel, I'll put a link in the description anyway you can go check him out well you can now see I'm winning, all I had to do was move this to that side, just move this out the way because it was pressing on the top of the drive shaft. That's gone cold too. I'm gonna have to. I, I must make about six a day and drink about two of them. Um, I get so involved in what I'm doing that. Um, well, I am. I'm gonna go put kettle on, make another one, come back outside, and as you can see, I've now got tension off this, so that now can uh, just pop up. No doubt, quite nice on its own maybe with a bit of an hammer but um, just a tap here and there that made it go further back in but 
I'm gonna do that brew. And now it's raining. No chance of getting it done for 12. Oh well. Well, I stopped for a bit, as you can see, we had a spot of rain, but what you wouldn't think is in kind of an hour, an hour and a half, how much rain does we rust? <laughs> yeah, it's just an hour, so you won't think it. Evil stuff, it's the acid rain. <laughs> I blame that Fukushima. As you can see, I had to go under in my tie rod end, but it didn't want to budge, and because I'd undone everything else, hitting it with a hammer meant it just jumped about, so I couldn't get it out, but, ah, I went um, around the back of this and gave it a whack with the hammer, and as expected, it jumped right off the end of the drive shaft, and yeah, that rubber's definitely worn and seen better days, so it was due for, it had to be done, you know, it's just raining crap into there, which I've now got to get out before I put new grease and everything in. So there's me, my drive shaft. Um, bit more spare grease. So, swap this for the new one. Should be all back on, and I should have all this together about 15-20 mm, minutes after MOT centre shuts. Okay, after a bit of Fading out, that's what we're with. And now we can go for our new one. Which these days is made out of some form of thermoplastic, because it's called thermoplast. And to me it seems about as good as recycled dustbin liners. I'm just maybe I, I kinda don't get on with change and resist change a bit, but Give me a good old fashioned one made out of whatever they were made out of, as opposed to this plastic. Well, it's gonna go on, but I'm not happy. Not happy. I've heard they're now fitting these on Volkswagens, but Audis, but I don't know. To me, it just seems shitty. I just can't see how thousands and thousands of bendings is going to work on plastic. Plastics normally kind of fatigues with all that bending. I'll be amazed. I'm going to. We'll check this in six months, but I'll be amazed if in six months this is in one piece. And um, you know, I mean, all right. It seems it costs twice as much as an old-fashioned one. Um, yeah, yeah, you get two tubs of grease with it and you get a new spring pin for going on here. But, um, nah, nah, it just doesn't seem right to me. Nah, I'm not happy. But we'll see. I'll give it a chance in six months, because if in six months it's gone, I'm going to be playing out. As I say, it costs twice as much as an old fashioned one, so. I don't know. But. I'll stick this on there, and I'll fill it with grease and stick it back on there, and then start bolting it back up, and I've just been inside and checked. I've about 30 minutes to do this and get there, which means I won't be going there today. And yes, I've now got a, a thing, rubber thing, because as you can see, it's still wet out here, but I wanted to get done, so that's where we are now. See if we can get this back together. Okay, we've got back to here now. I've got us nut back on there. No nuts on there or down here. But we've got us boot on. We've got us clip round but not fastened and the front one's not fastened either. And there's just enough space on these to get them around with your fingers and from to quick in. And then you're left with this bridge. And the idea is, is that bridge, they have a special tool and it gets nipped together to tighten the band or 
I'm, I'm going to go, but it gets nipped together. I haven't got that tool, but um, I've got a set of these. I'm hoping these will be good enough. So that's my next job is nip that one up, nip that one up, put the nuts back on there, and nut back on the pin through here, um, and then stick that caliper back on. So another half hour or so. Should be done, but now the MOT centre is shut down with the weather holding me back. Of course, now it's nice and sunny, but now I have to take it in on Monday morning now. Well, one thing I have found with this is you can use these once, and if you try to use them more than once, they tend to snap. So I suppose until I get another couple of them, I'm going to have to have a, a temporary fix with some cable ties. Well, we're back on many hours later, but we're back on with this magical new plastic boot. So, and yeah, never had to take that bit off. Just a different method. Sometimes it's easier that way. Sometimes it's not easier that way. Sometimes. Your stupid metal ties snap on you, and you end up having to go back with the old faithful. So, there's the old one, and then um, hidden behind there now is the new one. We're done, time for tea. And here's some more of that rain. So I'm kind of happy that I got my wheel back on. April showers. 